all are doing so well. I've been really enjoying hearing from you guys on my Instagram stories. And I've had a few people actually messaging me about video requests, which has been awesome because I still make YouTube videos, obviously, but now I've just been more, more like frequently posting on Instagram. But anyways, I love book videos and this has been one of those things that I've done throughout my time on YouTube. I'm going to talk about some of the books that I've recently read and as always, not all of these books are books that I really enjoyed. So I like to do these videos because one, I love getting your guys' recommendations for books. That's like partially why these videos are so amazing for me is because usually when I make these videos, I'm like running out of book ideas, which isn't the case in this video, but I will, um, I still want your recommendations because I'll tell you at the end of the video what I'm currently reading and I will link all my book videos down below. So let's get started. That felt so structured. I feel like a fucking ad on TV or something. Okay. <laughs> First, I want to talk about something that was disappointing for me. Unfortunately, Amy Schumer is not my cup of tea. Um, I watched her movie all those years ago, Trainwreck, and I thought, this is freaking phenomenal. Because that movie was hilarious. Am I right? It was hilarious. Like, don't even argue about it. It was great. After watching that movie, I was like, now I have an interest in seeing her comedy. But also, she has a book. So I picked up her book, and I hated it. <laughs> like, I thought it was so... Dumb, and I was so disappointed because it is sort of that kind of humor. There are different types of humor. Everyone has a preference for one or the other. And she has the tendency to lean towards like dumb humor. And I just don't like it. I don't. I don't find it funny. It makes me kind of sad. And she's very self deprecating. And I hate it. It makes me uncomfortable. Um, one of my favorite comedians writers, actresses, whatever, is Mindy Kaling, who is from The Office, does The Mindy Project. She's absolutely phenomenal. I've read both her books, love them. And she's very self-deprecating, but the way she does it is like much more tasteful and not like she doesn't obliterate herself. Whereas I feel like Amy Schumer is like so mean to herself that it's like, um, and then I tried to watch her comedy, like her stand-up on um, Netflix, and I was like, uh, it wasn't good, so I stopped. Another Netflix mention, well, he has a show on Netflix, Aziz Ansari. This is his book called Modern Romance. If you don't know Aziz, guys, you have to know Aziz. He's awesome. So he has this show on Netflix called Master of None. And honestly, when I first watched it, I didn't really get it. I was like, what is this? Why does everyone love this so much? And then I kept watching and I was like, actually, this is smart. This is important. Some of the topics he covers are really important. And his parents are on the show as his actual like his actual parents play his parents on the show and his dad is hilarious like I actually watch for the dad like to be honest so anyways he came out with this book called modern romance and essentially what this book is about is just that modern romance relationships dating marriage in the modern day and age with the introduction of technology and all that stuff and basically he talks about how dating sites and dating apps have influenced the way we start relationships maintain relationships and all those things and it is fascinating. A lot of this book has like the leading research in modern relationships. And so it's really cool. It's really interesting. It's not like a fiction book that you ha that has a story or a plot. It's really like informative, but not in like a annoying way. And he makes it so funny. Like there are parts of this book that I would just like crack up and um, he's not even, it's not even like a comedic book. I highly recommend this book if you're interested in learning more about how dating has changed, how relationships have, cha have changed over the years, because it is really interesting. Maybe that's just me and my psychology nerdiness coming out, but either way, I think some people would really like this. Next, this is called Mischling, and this book was given to me by my sister. And she told me, she's like, I bought this in an airport, I read it in like a couple days and I loved it. And I was like, girl, let me, let me have it. So I read it. It's about World War II. And it's about twins in a concentration camp. And it is heartbreaking, but like tastefully heartbreaking. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know those books you read, and I'm actually going to talk about one in a little bit, that like are so sad and so heartbreaking that it almost like actually seriously impacts you like it happened to yourself. This is one of those books that's like, it's really sad and it's really hard to read at some parts, but it's still beautiful and there's enough like goodness, there's enough goodness in the book to make it like 
palatable and like enjoyable. I don't know. I always think about books and I think about sad books and I only want to read sad books in summer because it's sunny outside. If I read a sad book in winter when it's like all dark and gloomy, I'm all like, oh, I can't, I can't, it's too much. Um, this is one of those sad books you could read in winter. Does that mean anything to anyone? I don't know, but that is how it is. Um, it's a very enjoyable read and spoiler alert, giving you a couple seconds to like click forward. It has a happy ending. Okay, there we go. So this is this is really good. Highly recommend. Oh, and it's by Affinity Konar or Konar. So yeah, and isn't that cool that her name's Affinity? Like, whoa. Let's move on to another nonfiction. This is actually something again for my sister. So funny. She was moving, and so she was clearing out all these books, and I was like, "Gimme, gimme," because I love I love like physical books. Like I could never be one of those people that reads a Kindle or an iPad. Like. I just like to have it and hold it. This is The Four Agreements. Now, I didn't know anything about this. When she gave it to me, I was like, oh, this sounds like kind of like a spiritual, like interesting, I'm into this, let's just like read through it basically. And I didn't realize like this is such a big deal. Like this book is really popular. I don't know, if you're feeling like you need some like guidance, this is an awesome book to read because it gives you sort of four, again, Four Agreements, it gives you like four kind of steps to take in order to become the happiest best version of yourself and it's very like step by step a lot of the self-help books that I've read because as you may know if you've been following me for a while I went through a phase where I was obsessed with self-help books it was kind of scary a lot of them don't give you like do this do that do that it's kind of more like I don't know it's not as clear and concise as that so this is literally just listing four things kind of giving a history of where this has come from and like I said if you're ever feeling like lost or like you need a little direction I feel like this is a really good book to pick up um, for anyone for any religion non-religion whatever definitely give it a, just give it a glance even I think you'll find it interesting let's talk about the book that almost broke my heart actually no this book did break my heart uh, ten times over a little life please I hope some of you have read this like I'm really hoping that at least one person will watch this and be like yes I've read that and yes my heart broke too because out of everyone I know uh, just my dad and I have read it and we talk about it like still I read it probably five months ago I read it and it was so heartbreaking that I had to supplement it with other things to read along the way but what this book does is it literally takes hold of your heart and your soul and it rips it in half and breaks it into tiny little pieces to the point where you're just crying every time you read this book and I know that might sound literally awful to most of you watching this and if it does don't read this I have many other book suggestions that will not break your heart so go check out some of my other videos but if you want to read a fantastic piece of literature pick this up because while it deals with some of the most heartbreaking topics, in my opinion, it is beautiful. I have never felt so much in like while reading a book as I had when I read this book. So I guess like the basic idea of this book or the basic kind of synopsis without giving anything away is the story sort of revolves around these four college um, boys who you kind of follow them from college onwards and you see their relationships with each other change like kind of the main I, I don't want to say he's the main character but he is he becomes the main character of the book is just so troubled and has such a tumultuous past that none of his friends really know about and as the story goes on you sort of learn you know why he is the way he is like I said this is one of those books that I had to put down some nights because it made me so either like sick to my stomach or sad um, and most times I read this I would cry but I hope that doesn't like freak anyone out <laughs> like I am a very emotional person so I should say that but also um, when a book can do that to you it's pretty amazing and it says something about the writer so this is Hanya Yanagira if you are willing to have your heart broken definitely check it out it does definitely have some mature themes in it so if you're young or sensitive to those things don't read it yet just wait put it on your list okay so I have one more book that I wanted to talk about and it is this one it's a book of poetry now I've never liked poetry I've always sort of just thought of myself as the type of person that's just not artistic and can't really appreciate arts 
a lot of the time. But that's not true. I don't give myself enough credit. I do appreciate art. I just don't have as much patience for art that's like hard to decipher or like really, really abstract. Like it just goes above my head and that's just me being honest. But this is phenomenal. So this book is by Rupi Kaur or Kaur, I don't know. And if you follow me on Instagram, again, I'm plugging my Instagram, but I post her poetry very frequently. She does a lot of poetry revol revolving around a very, very abusive relationship that she was in. And she does other pieces that are more like for me to identify with. So if you follow me on my Instagram, you will have seen some of those pieces that I absolutely love. And also which makes it really cool is she accompanies it with like illustrations that are very simple and very um, fitting to whatever she's writing about. And yeah, anyways, I highly recommend this. I think that it's also a beautiful book, like it looks nice. So if you are into that aesthetic, um, I just don't have an aesthetic. My life is like so tumultuous and like it just kind of does as it pleases that I don't have time for an aesthetic. But if you do, this could be part of yours, I don't know. The last thing I want to talk about is what I'm reading currently. And if you follow me on Instagram like I mentioned previously, you will already know. But because this season of Game of Thrones has been so good, I kind of have gotten back obsessed with the series. So as I was watching this this season, I was like, I need to reread the books. The first time I read it, I didn't know the things I know now, obviously, from watching the show and reading the other books. But I've been reading the first book again and being like, holy fuck, or holy shit, or wait, I'm not allowed to swear. Holy man, there is so much foreshadowing in this series, and there's so many things that I forgot happened. Anyways, it's so good. I love the series. It's definitely like, I think I have a video on my favorite book series. Definitely check that out. I'll leave a link down below. I actually think I might go rewatch that right now because I, I think this might be my top number one, followed by Harry Potter. I know, can you believe it? Harry Potter has been displaced by Game of Thrones. But the reason I would say that is because Harry Potter was originally written for a young adult audience, whereas Game of Thrones was not. And so I think the way that kind of worked out was Game of Thrones is just like better developed. They're also like much thicker books. There's multiple perspectives. I love that. If you've ever watched any of my book videos, you know I love like a multiple perspective book. Like that's what I'm talking about. And this one is. This one is a multiple perspective, and so is Michelin. So if you like that too, girl, I got you covered. It's like, honestly, George R. R. Martin is a fantastic writer. You better not fucking die before the series is done. Before he's done writing, I will actually, no, that won't happen. Thank you guys so much for watching this book video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know down below any of your book recommendations, some books you've been loving recently, any thoughts on the books that I have read and just mentioned. I hope you guys are doing really well, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.